Hey there folks, Pliskin by 51mm <clears throat> and uh, figured I'd do a quick PSA I meant to do this video a few days ago but I just ran out of time and I was really freaking tired there on Tuesday let me tell you, I uh, almost slept the whole day that's how tired I was but anyway, I got this comment from a fellow on one of my older videos it's from an ammo test video. There's a comment from a guy by the name of Robber4596. That's Rob, Robber spelled with R O B R. And that's it. Um, might be short for Robert. Either way, uh, <clears throat> according to him, and I'll put screenshots in because I'll take this over to my computer and, you know, uh, edit it up and all that. Um, According to him, he said he his M1A blew up from Ultramax 308 165 grain soft point ammo. And he said, I was waiting for catastrophic failure watching my video because I did a, re a review on it. He said, not wishing, don't get me wrong, thought maybe because my M1A blew up in my face today using the same ammo, the first round went fine, second blew up my rifle apart. Spread the word, don't trust this ammo. My dad bought this crap, crap from Cabela's. And I responded to him and said, Hey man, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're okay. I'll make a video later on this. That was two days ago. Like I said, I was tired. And let people know there might be a few bad batches of this ammo floating around. So yes, apparently Ultramax has a few slips in their quality control. And... I mean, I don't know how widespread this is. This is just one instance I've heard of. But I'm not going to, like, you know, dismiss this fellow. Because anytime you hear of ammo blowing up a gun, that's usually, um, with that happening, just, like, you know, being there and your gun blowing up on you, most people usually don't lie about that. And, because I don't know what, why would they make up a lie on Ultramax. So, if you have Ultramax ammunition for your guns and whatnot uh, you know just be safe and keep an eye on it when you're shooting so that's all I've got on that um, other things in the works um, the SLX3 primary arms SLX3 uh, came off my M1A the other day when I was shooting I still have to upload those other videos. I'll get them up later today. Today is July the 4th. Uh, happy 4th of July. You know, I wish I could celebrate by blowing stuff up, but I got work today. Uh, we do go in at 9.45 p.m., and this week is not overtime. This is the first time in about five weeks in about a month where I've come home from work, and I wasn't... I don't feel like I've been hit by seven semis and the last two backed up and then a gas truck ran into them and blew up on top of me. So that's why I'm able to do this video because I actually don't feel too bad right now. I had a pretty easy night. Um, but the SLX-3 came off my M1A. I get back on topic here because uh, I do tend to go off. Um, so. I put a new scope on it because we have a bunch of lying around and I think you guys will be very very interested in what I've got planned and what I've put on it because it was one that uh, came off of one of my dad's rifles it's an actual rifle scope this time I think I'm gonna not go the prism route for it anymore or red dot because putting that um, flat top rail on my M1A scout squad I think it's kind of turned it into like an F and FAL or a SCAR H because the recoil just beats optics to death or just rattles them loose from the gun. I mean, it's nice having that on there, but the Achilles heel to it is that you have to like, and I've finally found this out just, you know, from having it out there with the SLX3 and it finally rattled off. Because I've been through like three optics with my, uh, 
M14A4 M1A Scout Squad. I had the Viper Venom from Vortex on there. I can't remember the exact name. It was like a red dot. Although the reason I took it off is because it died. I didn't change the battery. Um, <clears throat> and then I had my SIG SL or oh, MSR, which is currently on my St. Victor. I had this on my M14A4 and it rattled off. It won't come off of the uh, St. Victor. It's been blue lock tighted on there. And then now this optic I had uh, this last one, the SLX3 rattled off. So I'm just going more this route with the M14A4 from now on. Um, I put an actual rifle scope on it. So I can't wait to get back down and side it in and get it all going because I think you guys will be impressed with it. I know I will be. And I need to really do a video on this rifle here. My St. Victor. I have planned for the last two weekends to do a first impressions video on this rifle because I've owned it for two years now. And every time I get around and get time to do it, I either forget, when I get free time I forget to do it, or I'm too tired. And all I want to do is just relax. Because I've been on overtime for five weeks straight. Five weeks straight, unloading trailers by hand, two a night for five weeks. I'm feeling it. Today is the first day, like I said, I did my analogy of the getting run over by semis analogy, but I, yeah, today is the first day in a while where I came home from work and don't feel like I've been absolutely demolished. It wasn't that bad in there tonight. Workload is pretty easy too. So, I will get around doing a video on this bad boy because personally, I think this is one of the best ARs on the market right now. In fact, I could probably do a video on it here after I turn this off. Just a quick uh, rundown. In fact, I think I will. So, um, anyway guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one. It'll probably be, since I've got time, I'll probably just do the video on this. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.